Hello everybody from my side. I am Gregor Spagnolo. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, I will be talking about .NET Core and microservices. The good, the bad and the ugly. So, Echo username. What is this equivalent in Unix? In Unix oh. systems. Who am I? <laughs> so, who am I? I started working with Java, then I came to the university and the Visual Studio was presented. And I was, whoa, Eclipse then was like 10 years behind the Visual Studio. So, when I started the university, I started working uh, with Microsoft Technologies. I worked for HIT, which is company, HIT Universe of Fun, company if you know, if you like gambling, you probably know them. Uh, then I, I am working for ProSoft and Biocoda. Biocoda, at Biocoda I am head of Windows development uh, where we are developing end-to-end -end encryption application. Uh, I am also Microsoft student partner alumni. I have a bunch of Microsoft certificates. I'm also Microsoft uh, Certified Trainer. Uh, because of this, I have some uh, nice gadgets for you. Uh, so, the people who will uh, answer my questions, the people who will uh, tweet about this talk will get some gadgets. Uh, so, I'm also Certified Technical Hacker which I'm probably one, only the one in Slovenia who is full-time developer and also certified technical hacker. If I'm not the only one in Slovenia, I'll, there are probably a maximum four or three more. So, what is .NET Core? Who knows anything about .NET Core? <laughs> yes. So, everybody probably knows .NET Framework. .NET Framework was the old framework for WPF applications, Windows forums, and ASP.NET. ASP.NET uh, runs only on IS. Uh, then, the new future is that we have .NET Core. .NET Core runs on every platform, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, the question here is, why is universal Windows platform under .NET Core? Uh, Microsoft put it universal Windows platform inside .NET Core. Uh, many of us still don't know why, because .NET Core applications run on Windows, Mac, and Linux and the universal Windows applications runs only on uh, Windows. Then we, ha we have Xamarin. Who knows what is Xamarin? First t-shirt is yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, Xamarin is iOS, OS X, and Android development in .NET. And we have also .NET standard library. .NET standard library is the library to rule all the libraries. Why is the library to rule all of them? Because you can build a .NET standard library, and you can include this library inside .NET framework, inside .NET Core, and inside Xamarin applications. And let's sum up what we talked so far. I talked about who I am and .NET Core. So, monolithic, versus, monolithic system versus microservices. What is monolithic system? It's not architecture Probably correct. <laughs> so, the monolithic system is, let's say, 
a big, nice, huge villa. The microservice are small houses which create one big service. So, uh, the Microsoft st moved to monolithic, from monolithic to microservices with .NET Core. Why? Because be when .NET Core didn't exist, you had just uh, ASP.NET applications which worked on IIS. And for IIS, it was very hard to deploy massively. Why? Because IIS runs only on Windows Server, which are very expensive. So when they created .NET Core, they went to Ubuntu services, Docker, and stuff. So microservices, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what is the good thing about microservices? Any guesses? Yes. Uh, firstly, we'll talk about re reliability. So what is reliability if we uh, look at this villa, which is monolithic, and these uh, microservices, which are small houses? If we have an example, for example, do you have a cat or kids? Anybody? OK, at least someone has. So you have a cat or a kid at home, and you left the candle on the window. And cat or the kid or a kid throws that candle down. What will happen in monolithic service when the, let's say, house catches fire? Entire system will go down. In the microservice, if one house catches fire, probably every other house will be still up and running. So if in microservice you lose one service, other services will still run. Uh, this is the good thing, reliability. And then there is availability. Availability is if you would like, for example, change the house. If you would like to change, let's say, one room of the house. If you will change here one room of the house, you will, on the, when you will update the house, you will have to go, let's say, let's say, out for at least a day. In monolithic system, if you want to deploy one change, you have to take it down, update. In microservices, you can take down any house you want, update it, and the entire system will still run. And then, then it is, as we say, scalability. Why scalability? Uh, if we want to scale up this villa, the only place where, the, where we have place to scale up is, let's say, on the rooftop. On the microservices, we can scale two things. We can scale the number of microservices, and we can scale each of them. We can scale just one house to make it bigger. These are some of the good things of microservices. So what are the bad things of microservices? Why is deployment the bad thing in case of microservices? Yes, this is one of the problems. Does anybody work with microservices? You have to deploy 17 different services instead of one. Yes. The deployment in microservices is really a mess. Uh, why is it really a mess? Because for each microservice, you will have to have deployment script. And now, imagine you have a beta environment and 20 microservices, and then you have the production environment and 20 microservices. This means that you will have at least 40 scripts for deployment. In case of monolithic systems, you will have only one script or two in case you have 
uh, the beta and the release environment. Uh, the second thing is modification. Why, the, why modification is bad in case of microservices? Yes, uh, in microservices, you have to have, you must have versioning. Why? Because in monolithic service, if we create a new rooftop, every other, every room in the house will have a new rooftop. In the monolithic, in a microservice system, if we deploy a new rooftop on one house, just one house will have a new rooftop and we will not know when other houses will implement this new rooftop. So uh, this is also the bad thing, the modification. And then there is also the performance. Why is the performance here a problem? Overhead. Overhead, yes. Because uh, Overhead is one thing, but there, overhead is more with uh, memory usage. Uh, the performance is more, there are more two problems with the performance. In microservice environment, you need to have extremely good internal network. Because every microservice talk to each other. Uh, Instead, on a monolithic service, you have just one house we talk to the others. So, uh, and what is then memory use? What is the problem with memories? Overhead is one, and then uh, for example, uh, memory use and performance are, let's say, quite the same things. In case of the villa, if you have, let's say, a uh, heat pump, or if you have an uh, air conditioning system, you will have one big air conditioning system. In the microservice environment, for each microservice, you will have one air conditioning system. In the cons electricity consumption, or if we compare it to RAM, we will use much more of electricity in microservice environment than in monolithic environment. But is this really an issue nowadays? Probably no. It's a bad thing, but uh, it's not a big issue. And then, if we move to the bad things, the ugly things of microservices, is testing. Why is testing the ugly thing? What types of testing do we know? For end-to-end -end testing, you need much more configuration. OK. What type of testing do we know? We know mainly two types of text, te uh, testing, the application. Unit testing and integration testing. Who was the first? <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> uh, unit testing versus integration testing. You can build your part of microservice. The unit tests will work. The integration test will fail. As you can see here, on the Windows example. The unit test of which window works, but the integration fails. Uh, then the next ugly thing about uh, microservices is management. Why management? Uh, in case of the monolithic system, how many log files do you have? One, two, three, let's say, error, information log, uh, and warning log. In case of the 
microservices, how many logs do you have? For each service, you have three logs. So, to debug or to trace the problem, you'll have to look at multiple logs, not just one. Uh, and the next thing is the consistency problem. Why the consistency? In the monolithic system, the flow is one, two, three, four. First you do this, then you do that, and we finish. In microservice system, there is the problem. Because I can call a function, and that function, you will have to talk to another microservices. And that microservice will talk to another microservice because everything is connected with everything, like IoT. What if one request is delayed? Here is a very big issue with consistency. Because if, if one uh, request is delayed inside the network, then you have issues. Uh, so ba for banking applications, is very not... Uh, good to use uh, microservices. It's more uh, you need to use uh, monolithic system. So, and then is the security issue. Why the security issue? Because you need to authorize the request between the services. Yes. So you need to implement it in every service itself. Okay. Uh, that is one of the issues but a lot of microservices are just for inter internal usage. This is not the problem till one microservice is really just for internal usage. And one day, manager will come and say, oh, look, we have this small microservice which produce statistics. We can export, we can uh, put this API available online. And there is where the really security issue starts. Uh, and to sum up, we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly things about microservices. So, pray to the Democrats now. <laughs> So, as I said, now we work in Ubuntu. So, how would you start with .NET uh, application in Ubuntu? You install .NET Framework for Ubuntu, and then you just dot .NET new We created a console application in oops, 91 milliseconds To run it We have to first run .NET restore. Why .NET restore? Yes, to load all the dependencies. Because as we said, microservice is just one service who needs to have all the dependencies, all libraries and everything. And now simply .NET run. Hello world. So, what also Microsoft created with uh, committing to open source? one tool. Oh, 
Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is really great uh, environment to debug. Uh, it works with Node.js, Angular, uh, JavaScript debugging, C++ debugging, Python, etc. Uh, and then we can create also very simple uh, web application. works. And we have fully running .NET application on Ubuntu system. It's responsive, is MVC, so you can see the entire application here. So you have views, you have controllers, and you have your assets. And that's it.